So how many of you seen my first hill test video that I reviewed 19 different bikes coming up this hill behind me in the grassy area? Super popular and I said in that video that it was to be continued and this is the continuation to that. So in a lot of comments I got in that first video, everybody was asking about the Tesco. So we're gonna run the Tesco bike up this hill real quick, the same way I did with the other bikes, just so you guys can see. And then you can go to the other video and compare it to how it performed against those. But in today's video, we're gonna be testing a ton of different bikes, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna go test it on a paved hill that's not quite as steep as this one, and then see how fast these bikes can make it up that hill at what speed. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you find these videos helpful, please click the like button because I have a lot of time invested in these and please consider subscribing so that you see future videos like this. And if you don't know anything about e-bikes, make sure you check out some of the other videos on my channel because I got a ton of content reviews on each one of these bikes that I'm gonna be testing. So make sure you check out that full video to see exactly how these bike performs and what specs and features they come with. And the reason I'm doing these videos is just to help you decide on what bike is right for you. And you're gonna see uh, a lot of people took the first video the wrong way and said, oh, those bikes are junk, can't believe they didn't make it. But this hill is super steep, guys. Not most people are gonna be going up hills like this, especially in grass. And with a little bit of pedal power, you can make it up most of these hills on almost any of these bikes. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're interested in any of these bikes, I'll leave affiliate links down below to all these bikes. If you use that link, I will receive a small commission, no extra cost to you, but that's what helps support this channel and helps me keep creating these videos and making better content. So just wanna thank you guys in advance. And even if you decide to purchase a different model than the one I have listed, as long as you use that link to get to their website to make your purchase, I will receive that commission. So thanks a lot, guys. Now let's get into it. So just for context here, guys, this is how steep this hill is. He's holding the level level. And I don't know if this is going to help you see exactly how steep it is or not. And it's looking like 28, 27 to 28 degrees on this hill. And like I said, not sure exactly how accurate that app is, but that's just to give you a rough idea of this hill. So like I said, this is the first bike we're gonna test on here only because you guys kept asking in my first video, where's the Tesco at? Where was that thousand watt bike? I wanted to see it. So we're gonna throw this one in here. Like I said, this one, it does have a thousand watt motor. One thing I wanna mention is on the frame on this, I've had a few recent emails where a guy purchased one of these and in my video, I stated how the welds were really good, nice and clean. You can't see any of the welds on this frame. He sent me pictures of his and apparently they updated the way that they manufacture their bikes because now they're using a different welding and they call it fish scale and you can see the welds. It's not as clean and not as nice as the bike that I reviewed. So something to keep in mind, if you decide to purchase one of these and you watch my review video on that, that's one thing that's different now is the quality, in my opinion, on the welding is not as good as it was on the bike that I reviewed. Pedal Assist 5 throttle only. 1,000 watt motor, 48 volts. And didn't quite make it all the way up over. The only bike that made it all the way completely up over this was the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. All right, so here's the steepness of the hill that we're gonna test today. So it's showing six degree on this hill. All right guys, so these tests are gonna be with full batteries on all the bikes, and a few of the clips might look a little out of place because I'm gonna throw some of the clips in there from when I initially reviewed the bike because on this hill is where I test every single one of my bikes. That's the first test I do to see how far they can get me up with throttle only with an initially fully charged battery. So if you see a clip that doesn't have exactly the same intro, you'll see what I'm talking about, then that's probably why. But without further ado, let's get into it and let's see how many bikes we can test up this hill. First bike is gonna be the electric 2.0. On every one of my tests, I'm gonna start with the front right here at this white post and we're gonna go up this hill and see what kind of speed we can maintain. I'm gonna track the speed on both GPS and on the display. Once the speed hits about four miles per hour, I'm gonna shut the throttle off and call it quits because the worst thing you can do for a bike is give it full power and stop the rotation of the wheel. So I'm gonna stop it at about four miles per hour. 
that's typically about where I would start pedaling anyway. Actually, I would probably start pedaling around six miles per hour once it reached about six. So without further ado, pedal assist five, throttle only. Let's see how far we can make it on the electric 2.0. What kind of speed we can maintain. This is a fully charged battery, the extended range battery, end of the guard row. I was able to maintain, I think it was 10 miles per hour and four miles per hour right there. So this is as far as I made it down to four miles per hour. We're gonna go ahead and put a mark here and grab the next bike. All right, here we go on the electric 3.0. I'm gonna be in throttle only, pedal assist five. And we're gonna see if it takes me to the top. Now, if we hit four miles an hour, that's when I would usually stop this test. Let's see how it goes. Seven, six, five right here is where the electric four so not too much further than the electric 2.0 but it is holding steady at four miles an hour the rest of the way up the hill did not pedal at all so i would say very similar power to the 2.0 but yes i feel like it does have slightly more torque because that motor didn't seem like it was whining real bad didn't seem like it was under strain and i was okay with it pulling me the rest of the way up that hill. All right, here we go on the electric light, a 300 watt motor, 48 volt, pedal assist five, full throttle. And where my son is standing up there, that's where I made it on the electric 2.0 on the first run with a full battery. This has a full battery. We are at eight miles an hour at the end of the guardrail, seven, six, five, Four. So four miles per hour, probably about 25 feet away from where he is standing. But we're gonna try this one more time here and I'm just gonna let it go and see if it makes it up with just throttle. All right, from a dead stop. And it's not really good to be doing this because on an electric motor, when you give it a ton of power and it's not spinning to keep itself cool, that's like the worst thing you can do for it is to make it die down like this and keep powering it. That's why I always recommend pedaling it in all my videos. But yeah, it dropped to zero. It probably would get me all the way up here. This is where the electric 2.0 made it to where it hit four miles per hour about right here. Uh, I don't want to keep pushing it. I don't want to burn anything out. It showed three miles per hour on there. My GPS went to zero, but uh, probably something with the satellites or whatever. But as you can see, the electric 2.0 does definitely have more power. It made it to this point a little easier at four miles per hour. But this bike is definitely no slouch for being a 300 watt motor. I got to tell you that. Now it is a single speed. So let's try it starting out here, pedaling a little bit and pretty easy pedaling guys starting out from there all right now we're going to try the electric light with a 60 pound rider all right go ahead bud just throttle no pedaling okay. pedal assist five we're going to see what speed it drops to man he's smoking me all right he's at 13 at the end of the guard row gaining speed still 10 11 12 he's gaining so i can't even keep up to him right now did you keep it full throttle or did you let off i let off what'd you let off for I don't know. well he let off the throttle that wasn't really a good test but as you can see size definitely matters and he let off the throttle i thought he did at the end of the guard roll because i started catching up and then he took off he was actually gaining speed coming up that hill so you can see at 60 pounds versus 165 pounds and I was pedaling my butt off here in gear two trying to catch up to him but I couldn't <laughs> all right so he's going to come up again full throttle this time he actually slowed down so that I could keep up to him the filming he said so 
We're gonna try to skin full throttle. I'm standing exactly where the 2.0 brought me to four miles per hour, and he's cruising pretty good. He just passed me at 15 miles per hour where the 2.0 stopped me at four miles per hour. So like I said, you can see size matters. He cruised up this at 15 miles an hour. And just for context, guys, this is about how steep the hill is. It's very hard to show in videos how steep these hills actually are. You can kind of see the grade there. Trying to hold the camera as steady as possible. Go ahead, start from there and see if you can just throttle up it. Oh yeah, easily with 60 pound rider. <laughs> We're gonna try the Electric X Premium. We're gonna do a few different runs because this is a 500 watt mid drive. We're gonna do pedal assist five in gear one the first time. Then we're gonna come back down, try it again in gear two to see how far it will make it in gear two and at what speed. And the battery is fully charged. Here's gear one, full throttle, no pedaling. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain and if we can make it all the way up without dropping below four miles per hour. Seven at the end of the guardrail. Six, five. So it looks like it's gonna hold steady at six. Right here is exactly where the electric 2.0 brought me to at four miles per hour. So six miles per hour was the minimum speed. Now let's go back down and try it in gear two. So he's standing right where the electric 2.0 made it to where I hit four miles per hour. All right, here we go from a dead stop, gear two, throttle only, 500 watt mid drive. Let's see if we can at least make it to the top in second gear. Not quite sure I'm going to. Eight miles an hour at the end of the guardrail there. Five. Not too bad, guys. Looks like it's gonna hold five miles per hour pretty steady. Up, oh, just dropped the four real quickly on the GPS. We're gonna keep going. It's still saying five here. So I would call it five. It wasn't a fast enough drop to stop. So made it up in gear one and in gear two. So now let's try gear three. And obviously on a mid drive, it is gonna matter what gear you're in for the speed that you're gonna go and the power that you're gonna have. The lower the gears, the more power you're gonna have on a mid drive because it's putting power through the chain instead of the power coming directly from the rear wheel. I think the perfect bike in my opinion would be a uh, mid drive with a uh, hub motor on the back. I think that would be pretty awesome because then you'd have the best of both worlds. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. <laughs> All right, here we go from a dead stop, gear three. And on this, when you start out full throttle, you can almost, it, it doesn't feel like you have a ton of power until you hit a certain speed and then it feels like it gives you a little surge of power. So still about seven to six miles an hour at the end of the guardrail there, five, four. And I'm gonna keep going guys, but it should have, normally I would have stopped it back there when it hit four, cause that's when I would start pedaling so it's still pulling me up at four miles per hour, even in gear three. So that's what's nice about a mid drive. You can use the mechanical advantage of these gears to help you make it up hills easier. This is gonna be on the G-Force T42. We're gonna do the same as the last test, pedal assist five, just full throttle and see how it does. This is a 750 watt bike. End of guardrail, about 10, eight, seven, uh, didn't, six. I didn't think it was gonna drop below seven. So six miles per hour pulled me all the way up the hill. Seven, now I'm gaining speed again, eight. So never dropped below six miles per hour on the G-Force T42. Definitely more powerful than the electric 2.0. Let's go grab the next bike. All right, the next bike is the Hay Bike Mars Limited Edition. This one has the same power, in my opinion, as the original Hay Bike Mars, the Hay Bike Ranger, um, basically all the 500 watt bikes that they have, they all seem about the same. So we're gonna test this one. 
full charge throttle only and we'll stop when it gets to four miles per hour this one should not make it as far as the electric 2.0 it does have less power than the electric and uh, seven miles per hour at the end of the guardrail so the electric made it way up there to the first big log on the first run this made it right here let me put a marker there and we'll go get the next bike all right i got a marker down there that tree log or log branch whatever you want to call it but this is what i want to show you guys so even though this thing stopped here with just throttle i'm going to start from here i'm 165 pounds with a little bit of pedaling i can make it up this hill no problem so it's not that these bikes aren't capable it's just how much effort you have to put into it to do it i mean i'm in gear three i could bump it down to gear one and make it even easier than that so i mean this bike is still going to be really capable for a lot of people by no means don't think that this bike is way underpowered and it's not going to do a lot more than a regular bicycle because it does even though it doesn't have nowhere near as much power as some of the other bikes i mean it's still very capable for most people now if you're going to come up steep hills like that grassy hill that i did in the last test then it's going to be a little harder to pedal up it but you're still going to make it you just might have to work a little harder and your weight's going to be a big factor too so if you're a heavier rider then the more powerful of the bike the better it's going to pull you up those hills and the faster you're going to go up them angway ep2 pro and this is supposed to be a 750 watt bike but as i said in my review video it seems more like the 500 watt bikes so let's see what it'll do throttle only and i have a feeling this is probably not going to do much better than the hay bike mars fully charged battery wow guys way worse than the mars so the mars got to that log up there and the angway ep2 pro got right here which wasn't much past the guardrail to where it hit four miles per hour so i'm going to put a marker there and go grab the next bike all right got my marker down now i'm going to show you just like i did on the last bike with a little bit of pedaling a little bit of throttle now i do have to work a little bit harder on this one i'll go down into gear one still able to walk up pretty easily with just a little bit of effort pedaling so like i said guys it's just how much effort you have to put into it on some of these lower powered bikes they're still super fun and like this one was super fast when i reviewed it like 30 or 31 miles an hour would just throttle so you're still gonna have a ton of fun on them Make sure you guys check out the full review of each one of these bikes if you're interested to see all the specs and details and how they performed on a long ride. Fido D11. This is a 36 volt, 250 watt motor. Pedal assist three, throttle only. That's the max pedal assist it goes up to. You can see this bike is considerably slower not even quite sure it's going to make it to the end of the guardrail so right here it actually went just slightly further when i let off the throttle because cruise control enabled but made it to the last reflector on the guardrail till we hit four miles per hour downshift the gear one and you can see with the seven speed gears can still make it up pretty decent I'm putting some effort into it though. On a long hill, I'd probably be dead by the time I got to the top. But still doable up short hills like this. Hey Bike Explorer, 750 watt motor, 48 volt, large 20 amp hour battery. Full charge.
13 at the end of the guardrail, and this is one of their more powerful, more powerful, fastest bikes that they have. So eight miles an hour, never dropped below eight. The next one is the Walkie H6 e-bike, 35 amp hour battery capacity, feels very powerful, tons of range on this bike. Pretty big bike though, guys. Full throttle, does seem like this one has a little bit more power off the start. See what we get at the end of the guardrail. This should pull me up no problem. 15 miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. This is where the electric ended. 10. Never drop below 10 miles per hour. Let's go get the next one. The next one's gonna be the Aventon Avenger. And this is a 750 watt bike, 48 volt. This bike should take me up no problem. Pedal assist five here, full throttle. Let's see what kind of speed it can do it in. Fifteen miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. This is where the electric stopped. Ten. So ten miles per hour was the lowest it got. Tesco Strength STT. One thousand watt. 48 volt bike, 1000 watt motor, pedal assist 5, throttle only, let's see how it does up this hill. Should take me all the way to the top with no problems. Oh yeah, easily. 11 miles per hour, 10 there for a split second. So it dropped to 10 miles an hour for a split second. I would say pretty much 11 miles per hour. Cyrusher Komoda. Now this has been one of my favorites as far as smoothness and ride quality goes. With the dual suspension, it's a very soft ride. It's a 750 watt motor, 48 volt battery. Let's see how this one does. Pedal assist five, full throttle. Should take me up at no problem. Thirteen at the end of the guardrail. Nine, eight. So eight miles an hour. Not too bad. Let's get on to the next one. Magicycle Cruiser. This is not the pro version. This is the original Magicycle Cruiser. Fully charged battery. Pedal assist five. Thr full throttle. Thirteen miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. Looking like nine miles per hour. Never dropped below nine miles per hour. On to the Cruiser Pro. All right, Magicycle Cruiser Pro. This is a 750 watt, 52 volt motor, 52 volt battery. Now the last test, their original Cruiser was also 52 volt and 750 watt motor. This one is 96 newton meters of torque. The regular cruiser is, I believe, 86 newton meters of torque. So let's see if this one does any better. And if you've seen my last hill test video, you know that this one was the winner. So let's see what it'll do here. Fully charged battery, 14 miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. 10 miles per hour. So 10 miles per hour. Surprisingly, it was not the fastest one up this hill, but this one had the most torque and most power on the last hill test video coming up the steep grassy hill. So that's, I didn't expect that guys. I expected this one to beat them all, but on that last grass steep, uh, steep grassy hill right there, this one won. But on this test, as far as speed goes, coming up that hill, this was not the winner at 10 miles per hour. All right, now we're gonna try the Magicycle Ocelot Pro. I'm gonna show you a clip here real quick of me going up this when I tested the bike when I had a full battery. 
And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you it again here with about a 45% battery and show you the difference. This has a 52 volt system, 52 volt battery, 20 amp hours. So you maintain a higher voltage throughout your ride because the voltage, overall voltage on the battery is higher, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of curious here. We're gonna try it at 45% and see how well it does. But first, let's hit it at full 100% battery power. First and foremost, we're gonna go up this with throttle only and see if it pulls me to the top. It should being 750 watts. Most of my 750 watt bikes will pull me up this with just throttle. Let's see how fast we can do it. So we are maintaining 14, 13 miles an hour, 12, 11. Never drop below 11 miles per hour, guys. That's pretty good. Some of my bikes drop to about eight miles per hour on that hill. So not bad at all. All right, so now that you've seen it at 100% battery power, we're gonna try it with 45%. Full throttle there. PAS5. About 14 to 15 miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. This is where the electric stopped. And didn't drop below nine miles per hour. For a split second, it dropped to nine. Almost stayed at 10. So there you can see that the 52 volt system maintains a higher voltage and gonna give you more power throughout your ride as your battery dies. Throttle only, and let's see how we do. We'll see the speed that it drops down to. You can see there it had a pretty slow start. 12, 11, 10, eight, seven six five three all right guys i'm gonna stop it right there now i was in pedal assist nine the highest level full throttle that's disappointing guys for a 750 watt bike and a 22 amp controller with a 20 amp hour battery that should have pulled me up this hill no problem i have no issues with almost any of my other 750 watt bikes getting up this hill the uh magic cycle um ocelot did it never drop below 11 miles per hour like i said some of my other bikes are eight a little bit disappointing on the power guys on this bike uh man that that's very disappointing now if i pedal i'm probably going to go right up at no problem let's just start here i'm actually in gear seven let's shift down a little bit and here comes a car now i can get up at no problem pedaling but as far as power compared to some other 750 watt bikes especially with a 22 amp controller guys like i said a little bit disappointing all right guys so now we're going to test the g-force zm bike up that paved hill but on my last hill test on this hill this bike wasn't 100 completely charged and i just threw it in there as a bonus i told you guys about that in the video and said i would redo it so this is 100 charged we're going to come up this real quick first just to see if it will make it all the way up i doubt it will but we're going to try it anyway but here we go, full charge, pedal assist five, full throttle. And I made it about five feet from the top. So not much further than before. I think before I might've made it to about maybe right here, if I can remember correctly. I don't know, go watch the video, you guys can see. But let's go ahead and try it on that other paved hill. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain. All right, here we go, G-Force ZM. 750 watt Bafang motor, 48 volts. Let's see if it does better than the G-Force ZF. I'm pretty sure it will. 12 miles an hour at the end of the guard row. Oh yeah, it's gonna make it all the way up for sure. Way better performance than the G-Force ZF. Eight miles per hour, so never drop below eight. I wish they would have kept the G-Force ZF bike performance the same as this one. And this is my father-in-law, six foot six, 280 pounds on the G-Force ZM, coming up one of the steepest hills in my town. How is it? 
That's what a six foot six guy looks like. <laughs> Riding a G-Force ZM. All right, everyone, here we go with the testing. Pedal assist five, full throttle. Now this hill, I go up in all my tests first with just throttle to see if the bikes will make it up this hill. Most 500 watt bikes won't for the most part and most 750 watt bikes will. So nine, eight miles per hour. So it did die down there a little bit to about eight miles per hour, which not too bad. Right about what I would expect for a 20 amp controller. Now this does have a 750 watt Bafang motor with a 22 amp controller. So it should pull me up this with no problem, but let's find out. All right, so here we go. I'm in pedal assist five, throttle only. And we're gonna see if this bike pulls me up. It should, in my opinion, with the 750 watt Bafang motor and 22 amp controller. Let's find out. I shouldn't have to pedal up this. Now, most 500 watt bikes don't make it up this without pedaling. Ah, uh, it, it's a little underpowered, guys, here. I feel like it should have had a little more power coming up that. Now, it did take me up without pedaling, but some of the other 750 watt bikes I've tested made it up that a little bit easier than that. So it made it up, so it is more powerful than 500 watt for sure, but seems like maybe they might have it toned down a little bit in the settings as far as power goes for it having a 22 amp controller electric bike company model e now as i've said before this is the best quality bike that i have built in the usa make sure you guys check out the full review video of this but this one here is a single speed you can get it in a seven speed for an extra 189 dollars when you configure it and they have a lot of different uh, options for you the way you can configure this being that they're built in the United States as far as Keller goes things that you want with it so make sure you guys check that out let's see how this bike does with a single speed that's not going to matter because I'm just going to use throttle only we're in pedal assist 5 full throttle let's see what kind of speed this will take me up this hill Eleven to twelve at the end of the guardrail. Seven miles per hour. So it never dropped below seven miles per hour. All right, guys, here we go on the hill test that I do in all my videos. We are in pedal assist five. I'm gonna start out with just throttle, and man, that thing really took off on pedal assist five with throttle with that setting turned up for a more powerful start seemed like it started pretty good but we're going to see how this bike does up this hill currently i don't think i have any 500 watt bikes that would really make it up this hill with just throttle eight seven six five so it's actually a little bit more powerful than the electric xp and the electric 2.0 because i never dropped below five miles per hour on that hill all right here we go on the rattan or rattan or rattan however you say it lm 750 750 watt motor 48 volt battery now in my other hill test video this bike actually impressed me with the power of it going up the steep grassy hills so make sure you guys check that out but let's see how fast it can maintain going up this hill full throttle looks like it's putting out 940 watts on the display hit 980 watts there for a second 12 miles an hour at the end of the guardrail eight so not bad guys never drop below eight miles per hour on to the next one all right, here we go on the Vitalin or Vitalin, however you say it, still not sure at this point, i7. This is not the pro version. This one, I believe, has a 22 amp controller and the pro version has a 25 amp controller. So the pro version should be a little bit more powerful than this. And as of me filming this right now, I don't even believe this one's currently available. So the one that you guys would probably be looking at would be the i7 Pro. But let's see how the i7 does. This bike does seem to have some pretty good power. Throttle only. 
Let's see how it does. I have a feeling this one's gonna do pretty well. So about 14 miles an hour at the end of the guardrail. Holding steady at 10. So never drop below 10 miles per hour. Pretty good. All right, here we go. Vitalin U7 step through e-bike. 750 watt motor, 16 amp hour battery, 25 amp controller. Pedal assist five, throttle only up this hill. We're gonna see what kind of speed we can maintain. Now this is a 750 watt bike with a 16 amp hour battery and a 25 amp controller. 12 miles an hour, 11, 10, nine, so nine miles an hour. Uh, this is actually the second run. The first run I did never drop below nine. That one dropped to eight real quick. Hofsco, Hofbetta, four inch fat tire folding electric bike. 750 watt pseudo motor made by Bafang. 48 volt battery. Throttle only. And we're gonna see what speed I can maintain going up this hill. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine. So nine miles per hour, almost stayed at ten.